thank you very much for that comprehensive uh, introduction and thank you very much indeed for the invitation and I'd like to thank Michael for his very interesting uh, talk on, on the Commonwealth and Mark for his introduction too. You've heard that for the last three years I've been involved in uh, speaking for the Labour Party on the Middle East and Africa. No mean task, very difficult indeed at an incredibly complex time. And I want to start with a, a, a quote from a Frenchman, Marcel Proust, who said that the only true voyage of discovery, the only fountain of eternal youth, would be not to visit strange lands, but to possess other eyes, to behold the universe through the eyes of another. I've been to many strange lands as they call them, if there are such things, over the past three years, and I've learned it an awful lot from them. But possessing others' eyes and others' perspectives is, I think, the most valuable quality that anyone involved in international relations can have. And we need to understand each other so much better. That is so true that it's almost become a platitude, but it seems to be becoming, be becoming much more difficult. I see my role as facilitating that type of uh, in international activity. And I'd like to start, if I may, and I hesitate to do this because I very seldom do so, by showing a short video. Wonderful. I've been an, an MP since 2001, and you get a lot of satisfaction in, in our job, and politicians sometimes don't admit that as often as they should. But I have to say that this project that I've been, I've been working with to develop links between Wales and Basutu has, has given me some of the most satisfaction in my political life. And it shows the way that cultural interaction can actually change the lives not just of of the athletes who visited and had their own national anthem um, sung to them, but also Dylan, I think who you heard speaking, the guy with, uh, from North Wales, who has himself manifestly benefited from the cultural connection that has been made between Wales and Lesotho. Now that, that related in, in 2012 to the Olympics, and. I, I'm happy to report that the Wales Vesutu cultural link is continuing, and in the 2014 Commonwealth Games, which Michael referred to, the the Lesotho team again came wow. to Wrexham, and again, and a much bigger team. We had a very a, we had a little team to start with, but we had a team of 40 athletes staying at Glindo University in Wrexham, who've hosted the team on both occasions, and have continue to develop the links between, between Wrexham, uh, between Wales and Kasutu. And really that, that link started firstly because of the British Council who helped with a programme called uh, the Global Schools Partnership, which I'm very proud was set up by the last Labour government. And I'm also proud that the present government have continued with the Connecting Classrooms programme, which has developed links on a cultural basis um, between schools uh, in the UK and through, throughout, um, I, I think, mainly the Commonwealth, but not exclusively the Commonwealth. And the, the link between Wales and Lesotho, which as many people here will know has been, has been a troubled country over, over recent months, has, has been very important in terms of, of um, giving Lesotho some prominence within the UK. A similar relationship also exists between Scotland and Malawi. It's not just um, Wales within the UK that are de developing these relationships. Now the civil society links between Scotland and Malawi go way back to the days of David Livingstone in 1859 mm -hmm. and there's been a, a great partnership between Scotland and Malawi over many, many years. I think Jack McConnell, Lord McConnell, former First Minister, is speaking here tomorrow, and he will be able to tell you much about that. 
But let me tell you that the Welsling is, of course, better, <laughs> although he will no doubt disagree with me as a, as a very good uh, friend. But today, more than 85,000 Scots, 140,000 Malawians are involved in the relationship annually, benefiting Scots and Malawians together. It, the partnership revealed that it's set to receive a further £100,000 from the Scottish Government for the Malawi Scotland David Livingston Scholarship Programme. Uh, as, and the programme is in its second year, with th uh, additional 30 students will be added to the 37 scholarships that are awarded to talented, young and disadvantaged Malawian students um, to develop their education. The students are given a valuable uh, opportunity to study within Malawi at a master's level, and that translates into greater social benefits within their universities and their wider communities. Each Malawian higher education institution is encouraged to present a maximum of 15 applicants for the scholarship programme, of which a minimum of 50% of accepted applicants will be female. Furthermore, the admissions process is, is, is also made accessible to students with disabilities. Now these links are really special uh, for all of those people involved, and I do encourage anyone and everyone to become involved in them. I visited Lesotho first in, in, in 2005, and the relationships that we have built um, over that period have been massively important for everyone involved. There's a school, my wife is here with me today, she's a music teacher, and she is one of the driving forces, and I'm gonna embarrass her, because uh, this year we're gonna have the 100 students involved in the exchange visiting Wrexham um, uh, and you know, visiting Lesotho. This week in Wrexham we have six school students and two teachers visiting as a continuation of the programme. Now that takes an enormous amount of commitment and work by school teachers and the school that was visited in the film that you've just seen um, had a, 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 an Ofsted report recently and only one line was written about the programme, that, it, that there was a strong link between, between the school and the Sutu. And the problem is that politicians like me don't give sufficient precedence to these links. They are not treated as importantly as they ought to be. And it's very important that we press our politicians to support the programmes more than they do at the present time. So fostering this type of contact, this type of global awareness and international collaboration at this present time is massively important. These are dark times for internationalism, it seems to me. And what Michael said about politicians is, is correct. There's the huge skepticism, if not cynicism, as to politicians and what they say. And there's a huge negative attitude to the other, to people from outside, that we need to confront and that we need to work out. And this is a long-term process, which is why the programs that, that we see through programs like the Global Schools Partnership are so, so important. Because in the longer term, they build relationships and they build understanding. Now, one of the things I also like about the Wales, the Sutu, and the Scotland Malawi link is that they decentralised the concept of the UK. One of my abiding political drivers is that too much in the UK is concentrated in London. And I like the fact that Wales, the Wales, the Sutu link, and the Scotland Malawi link develop the importance yeah. Of, yeah. of regions within the United Kingdom and nations within the United Kingdom. I speak as a son of the northeast of England myself, originally, although I've lived in North Wales for almost 30 years now. And there's a real danger when talking about the United Kingdom that we focus too much on London. So I think it's very important that, that the links that emphasize the different parts of the United Kingdom uh, are, are presented much more forcefully to the outside world. There's a massive, uh, <coughs> massive appetite in countries that I've visited in recent years in, in both Africa and the Middle East for contact with the UK. And of course there are huge cultural 
drivers that are from the UK, Manchester United, Liverpool, Sunderland, the team that I support, although I don't see many Sunderland shirts in Africa, unfortunately. When I met with uh, a pursuit of you this week, he told me he supported Arsenal. And when I go to Africa, I see football shirts everywhere, from all over the UK. And that is a massive cultural driver, and it's something that the, that the United Kingdom has, England in particular, I think Scotland is behind the curve on this one, that, that is, is very important. The, within Wales, Swansea in the Premiership has increased its profile enormously across the world, world. And we need to understand these benefits and to use them. And in a devolved UK, and from a country that's had a near-death experience in the last month, these aspects of the UK need to be emphasised. We need to get away from a London-focused approach to the UK and an increased understanding that the United Kingdom is a collection of four different nations and that within England there are massively important, powerful regions that need to be linked to places across the world. So, this diverse, modern Britain with different regions and different uh, nations needs to present itself to the outside world. We have a massive benefit of the English language for which there is such a massive appetite. And we need to use that and our cultural strength, of our film strength, our, our, um, our novels, our culture generally, the, the BBC, which is valued so enormously, the World Service valued enormously across the world. All of these tools that we have in our box, we need to use. And we need to use them to confront that, that fear of the, of, of the other that, that exists at the present time. So we need to create more relationships of the type that you saw in the film today. Because that combination of, of cultures, uh, learning from each other, is so valuable for individuals. And it develops and benefits their lives so much. And it really is something that we need to share much more widely. I think if that's a theme that we can carry forward in the discussions that we, we have over the next three days, then that would be something that is intensely valuable. Because I think we're very blessed in the United Kingdom at the, at the culture that we have and in the relationships that we have. We are still, despite the fact we, we sometimes are embarrassed about it, respected and viewed as a very important country. That's why, for example, when I spoke this week about recognition of Palestine and part of the Labour Party in, in the British Parliament, the world watched. And I was proud to be speaking on that issue. Because what we say is important. And I've learned over the past few years that, that, that it is important. And we, we are blessed because we can create like, relationships for individuals and as we've seen in Wrexham, in Wales, and in the UK. So let's keep those cultural links developing. So this is a long-term game. It won't be done in the short term. I know that politicians don't like the short term, but we've got to keep going over, over a long period. And if we do that, we as individuals will all benefit. Thank you very much.